we are going to bring on a very special guest. Uh, so Sean is actually a, a good friend of mine, and he has been joining on this uh, podcast for, for a few episodes here and there to, to give his insight on different NFL teams. Now, his fandom lies with the New Orleans Saints, with LSU. He's, uh, he's from Louisiana. He loves the team. He, he's diehard. He's not a bandwagoner, unlike most of you guys, <coughs> Patriots fans that became Buccaneers fans. But Sean wants to give his insight on Sean Payton leaving from the New Orleans Saints. He steps down, wants to take a break from coaching, could be returning in the next couple of years or so. We don't know for sure when he's going to be returning and if he returns, which team is he going to coach for. But we have Sean Landry joining us of the Go For Glory podcast, giving us his insight. So, Sean, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you, too. I know it's kind of weird to kind of hear Sean Payton stepping down from the New Orleans Saints. I know that you've talked about in the past. Your fandom really started from 2006, coming back from Hurricane Katrina when the Superdome opened, uh, that blocked punt against the Falcons. Like, so many good memories, Drew Brees signing on, and now it's an end of an era with Drew Brees and Sean Payton gone. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? Yesterday, I'll admit, yesterday kind of felt like a funeral, like just getting over death in the family, uh, just because that's how much Sean Payton has meant to me and to the fans here, or obviously in New Orleans and uh, the state of Louisiana overall. Um, but you kind of knew the writing was on the wall for the last couple of years. Uh, I think many of us, including myself, thought that he and Drew were going to retire after um, the 2018 season. Uh, when, you know, when we had the number one seed back then, uh, obviously we got cheated out of the Super Bowl, thanks to the referees. Um, but I, I full heartedly believe, and that's something I talked about in my podcast yesterday, was had we been in that second Super Bowl, uh, I felt confident we would have beaten Tom Brady in New England. And I, I felt like that would have been the end of an era in the Peyton Breeze uh, saga. Uh, obviously, we all know that wasn't the case. Both, you know, Drew came back, decided to come back after that season. Um you know, we get bounced from the playoffs in the first round the following year. Um, obviously, last year, you know, was a good run. You know, first year Tom having Tom Brady in the division, uh, beating him twice, and then ultimately uh, seeing the writing on the wall for, for Drew in the playoffs. And then you go into this year um, in what was deemed in, in his mind as uh, one of the most stressful years uh, in his coaching career, you know, having to deal with COVID, having to deal with injuries. Um, I think – for me, and, and I don't know about you, but I know a lot of fans, uh, Saints fans, our hearts kind of stopped when Jameis tore his ACL on Halloween against Tampa because we knew right then and there, like, we're in for a very long, long season. Um, so you factored that in with 58 players and a combination of trying to make things happen, um, playing a Monday night with the Dolphins with 22 of your starters out and a rookie quarterback. Um, and, you know, it, that's I think that's what ultimately led to Sean deciding, you know, I, I think it's time I need to step away and, and recharge and refresh. Um, it was it was a very emotional press conference for him. He actually said uh, in his presser, he said, two, he goes, I, I actually Googled the night before how not to cry at a during, during giving a speech. And two things came to the to the forefront. First was yawning, which he said he's like, I'm not going to yawn. And he said the second thing was, you know, drink plenty of water. So if you notice this press conference, he was constantly every so often drinking a little bit of water just to kind of keep his emotions down because it's hard for him. Anytime you've been in the in in this league, you know, especially in, in one place for so long, um, you know, it, it you have a lot of memories. And you touched on that just a few moments ago with the block punt against Atlanta when we reopened the Dome, um, winning the Super Bowl. Uh, Drew setting the all-time passing record, you know, having having tremendous draft class in you know, the last couple of years. Um, it, it was it was hard. It was frustrating. I'll admit I was frustrated because I, I felt like we were one quarterback away after after this year of, of having a good chance to get back. And uh, Cam Jordan said that this morning on Get Up. And um, but I also feel relieved and, and not so much relieved that Sean's gone, but I'm relieved that he's finally taken some time away. Uh, he got married last year. You know, his kids are growing up and, and, you know, you're seeing that a lot in the news with, with Tom Brady, you know, Tom Brady's now factoring family as a potential uh, decision maker to walk away. And so good for Sean. I, I'm thankful for what he has given my state and my city and, and, and my team for 16 years. Um, I, my only wish is when he comes back and, and I do believe he's going to come back to coach. My only wish is he does not come back to coach the Dallas Cowboys, please. 
please, Sean, if you are watching, do not come back to coach the Dallas Cowboys because we are forced to listen to them every morning and every day. We're going to be, we're going to be fed that twice as much if we, uh, if we have to see you with a star on your chest. So um, it, it's, it's definitely sad, but you know, it's like you touched on earlier, you know, he was the reason along with my father, why, you know, I'm, I'm such a diehard saints fan. Very well said. Uh, and Actually, I, I don't mean to change the topic at all, but uh, we just no. got breaking news. Uh, ben Roethlisberger just now announced his retirement from the NFL after 18 seasons. Wow. Uh, so officially just announced that. Um, and and kind of we'll, we'll discuss this a little bit later on. Um, but kind of tying Ben Roethlisberger into all of this uh, with Sean Payton leaving the Saints. Uh, and you talked about how, okay, the roster, maybe, you know, James Winston suffering this ACL tear, you know, maybe mm -hmm. like all the stress of this, like Drew retiring. Maybe now is like a good time that I should be taking a step away. Well, then what about the future for the Saints? Like Ben Roethlisberger's gone. So that, okay, that leaves an opportunity open for Pittsburgh, like we imagined for maybe those quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel Hackett just got hired by the Denver Broncos. So Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. Russell Wilson, like Deshaun Watson. Uh, mm -hmm. Where did the Saints go from here on out as far as a personnel standpoint, as far as their players solely? Mm -hmm. Well, that is the $74 million question. And I mean that because that we are $74 million over the salary cap. So um, whoever comes in as the next head coach is going to have to figure that out as well. Um, personally, I've, I've been really on the Russell Wilson uh, train this whole year. I really felt like after this year, he's going to come to New Orleans. I, I wasn't sold on Aaron coming just because, um, you know, all signs and obviously now looking like he's going to go to Denver. Um, but that's going to be the, the biggest question mark is, and that's for the next head coach to decide is how is this roster going to look? I read something yesterday. They talked about 10 players that could get moved. They, you know, they named guys like Alvin Kamara. They named guys like Cam Jordan, Malcolm Jenkins, the Mario Davis, key, key pieces of our team and of our unit. Um, there's a couple names that I can tell you that I, I feel like we should move on from, not just because of what, not just because of their, of their contribution to the field, but just a lot of their off, off the field, in terms of injuries, uh, guys like uh, Teron Armstead and Andrews Pete, yes, two anchors on the offensive line, but just have not been able to stay healthy. I mean, Andrews Pete has been hasn't been healthy for most of the last couple of seasons. So, those are guys I feel like we can move on from. You know, they talked about how yesterday you can literally uh, save nine million dollars by cutting Taysom Hill, and we just signed him to a four year extension. So, um, again, I feel like the future is bright in New Orleans. It just depends on who the who the quarterback's going to be. Um, you know, are they going to bring back Jameis Winston? Are they going to look elsewhere? Um, I really hope they do not bring back Trevor Simeon because I just was hard to watch, period, with him. Um, but it also is going to depend on, on the next head coach. And, and is that head coach look, looks at our current talent, current roster, and said, you know what, even though we've got a $74 million hole with our cap, uh, there's still plenty of promise and still plenty uh, to play for and to, to succeed with this organization. Absolutely. And you just talked about the players right there. We got Sean Landry joining us, by the way, if you guys are just now tuning in live of the uh, Go for, for Glory podcast, giving his thoughts on Sean Payton and the Saints. Um, you talked about the quarterback situation, the players, some players that could be moved. Now for the Saints, the head coaching position, mm -hmm. who is your front runner? Because Nathaniel Hackett got hired by the Broncos. All the mm -hmm. other, other teams are like, two interviews in with multiple candidates, Brian Dable pretty much off the table at this point by the Giants or the uh, Miami Dolphins. Like who is available at this point and who do you think would be the best fit for the Saints moving forward? Well, the, the best fit right now um, is Dennis Allen. And, uh, you know, they asked that of Sean in the press conference um, the other day. They asked him, so what advice would you have to the next head coach? And he goes, well, Quite honestly, you know, they have a they have a tremendous candidate already in house and um, he didn't mention Dennis by name. But uh, I was watching after the review with Matt Moscona um, and he was talking with one of the guys, one of the reporters who was there at the presser. And uh, he said he happened to look over at Mrs. B and she started to chuckle and uh, standing right behind her, believe it or not, was Dennis Allen. And he had a smile on his face. Uh, so you kind of feel like there's a there's a plan in the works to potentially name him as the next head coach. Um, I've seen other names like Aaron Glenn, uh, former defensive backs coach for the Saints, who's now up there in Detroit with Dan Campbell. Um, you know, they, you and then you have the obvious other names, Byron Leftwich, Jim Caldwell, Doug Peterson, um, Eric Bieniemy, to name name a few. But 
Um, I feel like right now, I think I feel like Dennis Allen is, is probably the best fit for this team just because a he's 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 brought so much to our defense over the last couple of years. Um, you know, took over in 2015 for Rob Ryan. Uh, really has elevated that defense to an elite um, unit in this league. I feel like he would be a good fit, and I, and and literally you would keep that continuity within your locker room within the organization. Again, you just have to figure out the salary, and you just got to figure out who your quarterback is. Yeah, Dennis Allen seems like the the most logical choice at this point. It would make a lot of sense, and and wouldn't be a bad hire at all, or rather promotion, I should say, for Dennis Allen. Uh, mm-hmm. Sean, I appreciate you joining us for this uh, episode of Town of Football, giving your thoughts on Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, so you can find me on Podbean. Uh, again, I appreciate you for the, the shout out this morning, putting my uh, my link in your in your nice little background. Uh, you can find me on Podbean. It's uh, Go for Glory. Uh, I just started it last year, and I'll admit I had taken some time away. Obviously, when you have a wife and you have a dog and you have uh, work and, and other responsibilities, it's kind of hard to get into that podcast. Um but it's free to subscribe, like, listen, comment. Um, you know, I'm starting to get back into the airwaves, you know, released my first episode yesterday. Uh, so you can find me there. Um, but again, I, you know, I appreciate you having me on and um, always, man, if for those who are listening, Hassan Khan provides very great insight. You know, we watch get up, we watch it, you know, good morning football and you get fed the same stuff every single day. So guys like Hassan, uh, give us a different perspective and and kind of find a different outlet to really enjoy um, something than than what the major networks provide. Definitely, I want to give everybody more coverage than rather than uh, Max Kellerman talking about Tom Brady falling off a cliff or uh, <laughs> Stephen A. Smith talking about the Cowboys. I don't know, but uh, I appreciate that, man. Sean, thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Thank you. You do as well. And that was uh, Sean Landry joining us again. Go uh, subscribe to his podcast and. Uh, make sure you guys check him out on on uh, Podbean as well, and he does a very, very good job. 